Welcome back. We're going to attempt day six of the Kotlin, uh, the Advent of Code challenge, which I happen to be attempting using the language Kotlin. Uh, not going to lie, I did peek at this a little bit before the stream to figure out is this something I do want to attempt uh, right now or later. And uh, I don't have much time, but we are going to give it a valiant attempt right now. Um, so that's the plan. Um, curiously, my stream dashboard is okay. Just having an issue there, but I am live, so that's not an issue. So uh, today's problem: Day Six Universal Orbit Map. You've landed at the Universal Orbit Map facility on Mercury. Because navigation in space often involves transferring between orbits, the orbit uh, maps here are useful for finding efficient routes between, for example, you and Santa. You download a map of the local orbits, which are your puzzle input. Except for the Universal Center of Mass, the COM, um, every object in space uh, is an orbit around exactly one other object. An orbit looks lo roughly like this. Here's an object, which uh, is the center of mass for uh, this system, I should say, uh, more easily to parse, here's an object which is orbiting another object. So BBB is in orbit around AAA. The path that BBB takes around AAA, drawn with lines, is only partly shown in that map data. The orbital relationship is denoted uh, AAA orbit BBB, um, which uh, means the BBB is in orbit around AAA. Before you use your map data to plot a course, you need to make sure it wasn't corrupted during the download. To verify maps, the Universal Orbit Map Facility uses orbit count checksums, the total number of direct orbits, like the one shown above, and indirect orbits. When A orbits B and B orbits C, then A indirectly orbits C. This chain can be any number of objects long. So A orbits B, B orbits C, C orbits D, then A indirectly orbits D. And this description goes on to describe that if you have this relationship, then A still indirectly orbits uh, C and D, and directly orbits B. So given this map, you can produce this, by the way, this is a graph, um, it's a directed acyclic graph. Uh, you could call it a tree if you want. So we're doing the advent of code challenge and we're creating a tree. Um, so in this example, uh, from this head, uh, from this directed acyclic graph, from this node, there are 42 uh, direct and indirect orbits. One of those is COM and B. And then from there on, uh, now this is a rather simple graph. You'll note that no node has more than two uh, objects orbiting it. That's, I don't think that's guaranteed to be the case. Um, so this only talks about when two objects are connected by a line. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, there. I didn't see in the specification any requirement that orbiting had to be defined in that way. Um, oh, so here is a sample input. So I want to make a function, because that's what I've been doing a lot in here, in this language. Fun f. All right. Um, so I think this is going to take a mutable map of string to string. No, nah, this isn't so good either. What do I want my most fundamental thing here to be? Do I want my most fundamental thing to be a function? Or do I want my most fundamental thing to be a data type? Um, I don't think having it being a data type is going to simplify anything. Uh, Yes, yeah, so let's go back. So let's just do everything with strings. And 
this is going to be a set of string, uh, or rather any collection, but set is more than fine. Uh, so that's the data type of a parameter. Uh, let's just call it map. Why not? Um, and we have uh, some no. We have some edge that we want to attach to the graph, which is a string. Um, and oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. Data class edge um, input string and it's going to have uh, <sighs> da, da, da. wait what oh this I'm sorry this is a val uh, input of type string so fun uh, center yeah this is kind of ridiculous uh, to be honest because I'm wanting to destructure a thing by splitting it on that parenthesis um, so I could just say val um, how do I do this center is equal to input dot split of uh, right parenthesis and then element zero and here I can do value uh, planet uh, planet just means wanderer uh, in Greek um, I don't know a better word to describe the thing that is in orbit. An orbitoid. <laughs> that feels... I think planet... Oh, moon. Moon is fine. Moon is not the only thing that can orbit, but let's just pretend it is. All right. And yeah, I could call this a planet or whatever, but planet just means wanderer. Um, center is probably more appropriate. I still don't know what to call the orbitoid, but uh, so an edge will be of type edge. Um, sure. No, I don't need a set of string there. All right. So map dot put um, Oh, okay, this is where things get messy. Do I need anything here? Because a data class is not mutable. Um, so, yeah, this notion of collecting things in a, well, I'm calling this a map. This is really just a graph. And what do I want to do? Um, if graph dot contains key edge dot center um, graph uh, get element center uh, dot wait. Can I not put directly into this set? Um, so we're talking about a set that's recognized. How do I put something into it? Oh, this needs to be a mutable set. There we go. How do I insert into this? Um, edge, no. 
Okay, we're going to have to actually look this up. How do I do this? Google Kotlin mutable set add. Yeah, so it's the mutable set API. It is add. Edge dot moon. There we go. Uh, only safe or non null asserted calls are allowed on the receiver. So, can I do this? All right. I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to look that up. I don't have time right now. I will look it up later. I think that is the safe lookup operator. And that's what I was uh, grasping for the other day as well. Um, so I want to further have a thing in here. Um, and this is disgusting, but wait, no, let's do it this way. Um, so if the graph does not contain this, uh, graph center is equal to mutable set. There we go. Um, mutable set of empty. Huh. Actually, another way I could do this. Uh, there we go. And then we could make this the else uh, for that. And this functions. There's certainly a more idiomatic way about it, but. Um, all right, now what do we call this? Um, connect? I don't know. So here we have an input. Um, all right. <sighs> Val input is equal. There's my alarm. Sorry about that. It's equal to this. Um, input dot split on new line character dot for each uh, connect some graph um, I mean I could also return the graph out of this There's no need to return the graph. Um, mutable uh, set of. So this is going to be a string to mutable set of string. Initially empty, right? One type argument expected for inline fun. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I've already messed up. There we go. So we want to connect our map. Uh, for each thing in here, for each input, we want to connect our map with the input. Um, and this duplicates a name elsewhere in here. Uh, I've already used the word edge, I've used the word input. Yuck. Um, I mean, I could call it data, 
That, that sucks. That's a terrible name for data, but. Um, oh, this requires an edge. Edge of input. All right. Um, and then we want to count up the number of. Uh, uh, the number of orbits in this graph. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, so I need to figure out um, how to traverse and or just count the things in this. Um, unfortunately, when I do this lookup, well, whatever, Can I just print line to see what graph I'm ending up with? Yeah. And just verify this runs at all. Nope, does not run. Unresolved reference center. Uh, I get the sense that there's almost certainly a better solution to this. Um, involving building an actual tree instead of building a map of whatever. Um, okay. Hey, that's cool. I'm not sure what I expected, but that is pretty cool. Um, so I guess I just need to start at the root node and descend the thing. Um, <laughs> There's got to be a efficient solution here, which I am not thinking of. One would be just to expand all of these, like to expand KL to JKL and expand, um, you get the idea, and just count the number of parentheses. Um, that seems painful. It seems like using a sledgehammer um, when something more elegant could suffice. Maybe a sledgehammer is the right way to go. Um, so what do I do? Um, I mean, I could repeatedly iterate over the map, generating things that aren't in there. That'd be kind of fun-ish. <laughs> um, I guess I want a function to count the map. Why not? Um, so let's call the function count. Uh, it doesn't need an edge. I guess it does need a starting point, um, which we happen to know. Uh, again, I'm struggling because like, Java imposes habits that don't apply here. All right, so starting at string. Oh, I could just do that count. Yeah, whatever. We're going to figure out something. I'm going to count the, uh, the length from some moon to some center. Um, and I don't have a backwards lookup. Oh, that's painful. So this is a directed acyclic graph. I could at the same time produce the complement of this, I guess. Why didn't I do that in the first place? Oh my goodness, I'm having so many regrets. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, no, I just need a list of edges. So this thing I said earlier about having a graph is that's that's one way to represent things. Um, yeah, that's not a good way to represent what we need here. Because um, it offers no advantage over just a simple list. 
the list is still going to have the problem of calculate the distance. Um, so our graph is just going to be a mutable list of edge. Uh, I'm sorry, a mutable set of edge. Um, and that's to say that we don't even need a connect function because we understand how to mutate a mutable set. Uh, okay. I hadn't had any coffee this morning. Uh, I do better coding in the afternoon than in the morning. But everybody demands. <laughs> I don't know. That's just not how the world operates. Um, so instead of having a function connect, um, we just say effect. Here and here's another way to do it: mutable set of edge. Um, array of is that what I want to do? Mutable set of takes a var arcs. Oh, well, if that takes of our arcs, then yeah, we don't need the for each. We can just do data dot split. Um, all right. What's the issue here? Required or found a list of string. Oh. So to create a mutable set of edge, um, we're going to transform each element here uh, from input into edge of input. And now what? Uh, required a problem six, and we got a list of problem six edge. And the way to produce a mutable set, it doesn't even have to be mutable at this point. There we go. We got a map. That wasn't so hard, now was it? Um, so this is another way of representing the graph. Um, bingo. All right. And so now you could traverse this going backwards, uh, since we know the moon and center of each edge. And we could find our distance to the center. So our distance from an edge to the center is um, uh, fun count for a string uh, given. Uh, so for some moon, there's a distance to the center, um, and we want to compute that based on the map that's of some type, uh, which is uh, what well, happens to be a list of edge. A list is probably not the easiest thing to work with. Um, that's what we have at the moment. And I don't think I'm going to stick with that. Um, so here we've produced a map. And so we've print lined our data. And Uh, to what? To hash set? Beautiful. Um, wait, no, a hash set would be, um, if I knew the ID of each edge, that would be a thing. Uh, map indexed. Oh, perfect. This takes a transform. Um, 
So let's take some function um, index int comma t to relation r. Yeah, I'm not sure that I understand that. Um, all right. So we're going to look up Kotlin uh, to map. How do I convert a collection to map? There's a method to map. All right. Returning all key value pairs from the collection of pairs. Um, No, so we got to mutable list, we've got to list. Um, so this here is a uh, this is a list of edge. Map dot what? What do we have on this? We've got a sub list, we've got a for each. I want a way of producing a map from this. I want something idiomatic. Um, val graph, uh, which is going to be a map of string to edge. is equal to map dot what associate by um, I mean I see this key selector all right uh, associate by how do I do this uh, Well, at least uh, Google was quick to suggest a solution. So an example of this returns a map containing the elements from the given sequence indexed by the key returned from key selector uh, function applied to each element. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, edge uh, edge dot center no edge dot moon. There we go. That's our key selector. So now we have a graph. And something went kaboom because we produced a function here which we're not using. But um, if I run this without that function, what did we get now? Um, all right, process finished, com equals edge this. Okay, com equals edge input com b. b equals edge input bg. Um, I'm sorry, input is equal to com slash b. And then I'm not sure why the this is the entry. because the moon is really what's of interest here. So the key here should be B, not com. And the key here for, yeah, input equals C, D, that somehow I got this wrong. Oh, I know how I have it wrong. There we go. My destructuring was incorrect. Um, let's try that again. Let's see if we get a proper edge graph. Index out of bounds one, size one. Um, wait, so what was the problem? Input split delimiters. This fails. Uh, Forty-eight fifty and get in edge and init line three. So this here 
obviously where we're trying to get element with index one is where this is failing. <sighs> That's disappointing. Um, maybe this split doesn't belong here. Really feels like it should. Yeah, how could this fail? I guess let me take a more trivial example. Um, com parenthesis b. So we've split that on the new line character and um, I guess for each non-empty element. That's what I'm wanting. Um, well, I'm sorry. Let's get rid of this new line character here. Guarantee that we're going to have only one element in data to split. Or after the split. Yeah, okay. So it's just a matter of having a trailing new line. Um, so data trim split. Okay, fine. Whatever. So, yep, there B is the edge where the input is com B, etc. Um, I think that works. So, next is what? Um, so, we've produced a graph. And now we want to count the graph. Oh, we actually have our list of edges. Um, we don't need all that information. We just want a count. We need a count of the entire uh, map. So the data type of our map is now map of string to edge. I guess I will take a moon argument and return what? Um, distance to com. So um, so if um, moon is equal to com um, Return zero. Uh, this is having a problem because I didn't declare a return type. The return type is going to be int. Um, let's start with something really trivial. Uh, print line. I'm sorry, we don't even need to print line. What we learned yesterday is that expressions uh, here will get evaluated unresolved reference string um, oh right so we need to count the graph um, whatever it'll compile I'm still missing something here unresolved reference string. At line 20. What's your suggestion? Type annotations required. Um, that's a type, right? I thought string was a type. It's, it's something else. Oh, I'm sorry. I have it on the left as lowercase string. I knew that. All right. Unresolved reference string. Oh, this is the unresolved reference. The red indicates bad, not good. All right. 
So we still had some warning mm -hmm. for something. Uh, warning parameter maps never used. This did return zero. Um, All right. Um, <laughs> so graph dot. I mean, I could, yeah, map dot each or for about map dot some aggregate fold something. Uh, yes. Fold zero, no. There's another operation here. Uh, map dot reduce. Um, is there a sum thing? Yeah, sum by whatever. Uh, and the thing we want to sum is this but not com, we want to sum by uh, for each edge. Um, edge dot moon. So that summation is gonna return a non-zero value, which is gonna be the count of the number of nodes other than the center, which is 11. Which I think is correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's right. Um, so instead of one, it's going to be one plus count of. Um, let's see. Map at moon dot center. Yeah, this is going to be a one instead of a zero. Um, required string. Oh, I'm sorry, this also requires the map. Um, yep, and we're gonna assert that this is safe, I guess. Uh, all right. Oh, well, yeah, there's a lot of things I can think about here. Um, we're going to learn more idiomatic ways to do things with optionals, but um, hopefully we get 42. That's not 42. <laughs> um, how about if the moon, if this is the center, return zero. Let's try that. Some silly off by one error, I hope. Um, yep, there we go, 42. All right. So we need to get uh, my puzzle input, which is this here, and put that in place of uh, the example input. Uh-oh. OK, well, that took. It crashed for a second there. But um, that's a lot of parameters. And I'm fine with that, um, but I'm not sure if my IDE can handle it. I'm really not sure if the IDE can handle this. Uh, we can try it. Exception analyzing expression here. Yeah, OK. Um, turns out that a multi-line string literal with this many components to it is apparently a problem for the uh, compiler. I'm not sure how I'm going to fix that, but um, that's probably a good as point as any to break this um, uh, in order to figure out, well, I need to be able to read it from a text file in Kotlin, don't I? Um, all right, so we're going to need to produce a new text file. Uh, new 
nope, not a module. We're going to change uh, this appearance first, exiting full screen mode. Second, um, entering distraction mode, exiting presentation mode. So now we got our project here. We got source. And I need a new input file, a text file. How do I specify text file? Uh, problem 06. Uh, text. Um, nope, I did this wrong. Uh, refactor, rename. There we go. Problem six dot text. And apparently I can actually stick my 1,153 lines of input in that file. And then we'll switch modes back to presentation mode and so on and so forth. Um, oh. Presentation mode and full screen mode are apparently the same thing. I can get the web browser back. Um, I want to see my problem six Kotlin thing. And now I need to figure out how to read a file in Kotlin. Uh, come on, let's do this. Kotlin read file. Wait, did I see there was a read text? Use lines, so. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, we'll say this is var data of type string. And then we can reassign it. It's going to be equal to file dot uh, problem o six dot text. Um, trust me, the file exists. No. Unresolved reference file. All right, file this dot use lines. Nope. Is this suggesting I have to use a Java IO file instead of a, like what are my options here? All right. And then this is alerting me that I'm trying to, yeah. Oh, for each line I can add that. All right. Um, yeah, so instead of reassigning data, uh, for each line, we're going to add the line. Um, we're going to convert that to an edge. Um, and then what? Um, yeah, no, this is going to be our new definition of map. Um, uh, this is going to be a list of edge, and there's our assignment. And I'm going to get rid of the example data because now we're reading things a different way. Um, um, oh, for each line we're uh, producing this, that's not right. Um, I mean, yes, I could use a for each line technique and cr create a mutable set in the first place. Um, uh, 
Yeah, so I want to read lines. Um, so that's a set of strings. And then map. Map using this kind of map to produce a list. Um, so let's try that out. I'm not sure that problem 06.txt is going to be discoverable. If it is, oh, well, this seems to be a good sign. Uh, that seems to be a really good sign. That's um, the answer. Yeah, nice. Let's go to part two. Now you just need to find how many orbital transfers. Uh, you need to get to Santa. You start at the object you are orbiting. Your destination is the object Santa is orbiting. Uh, orbital transfer lets you move from any object to an object orbiting or orbited by that object. So supposing you have this map that looks like that. Your goal is to get to D, or I'm sorry, to get to I. Um, so a uh, minimum of four orbital transfers are required. One to get to K, one to get to J, one to get to E, one to get to D. No? Oh, I'm sorry, you're orbiting K. So you need to get to J, to E, to D. And let's just pretend Santa is going to meet you at D. Um, so that's four transfers. So this what's the minimum number of orbital transfers required to move from where you're at to where Santa's at um, between the objects that they are orbiting not including you or Santa uh, so my puzzle inputs still the same our definition of count is still the same for the total number in the graph it's just our goal is a little bit different um, Oh, so now we add another parameter center. Um, all right. Oops. Well, I think that'll be okay. So I forgot to put a comma here. So both of our distances to get to uh, center com can be determined. Um, now I'm not wanting to sum this for the entire map. I'm just wanting to sum this for me and Santa. Um, so I'm going to want to sum by um, edge if uh, Let's see. No, I don't even want that. <laughs> I want something simpler. So instead of all edges, I just want the count of me uh, to the center. Let's start there. Um, let's start with this. Uh, so my distance to the center is some number. Um, what's the issue? No value for passed in uh, parameter center. Uh, do I really have to give this a different name? I didn't think that was the issue. No value for past parameter center. Create a function called count. Oh, I'm sorry. Here I do need to pass the center. Um, that's the issue. All right, let's try that again. So my distance to the absolute center um, is 225. Um, and distance from 
Santa to the center. Now note, the subtraction of this is not the answer. Um, okay, well, that's disappointing. Um, do I really need to do this? Do I need to print both of these values to get them to both print? We can do that. Maybe it's just the last value in a script that gets printed by default. I don't know. Yeah, so Santa's distance to the center is 125. My distance to the center is 225. We're going to meet somewhere um, in between. And it's finding that in between point that's a bit messy. So. Uh, one solution would be to have each of these things print out the full uh, path to get to the center. And then you could parse out all the edges that are in intersection between that. And maybe that's the best way to do it. Um, so... I guess that's what I'm doing because I don't have a better way to identify. I, like, I could iterate through every possible node in... Okay, this is its actually pretty fast to do that, so we're going to do that, even though it's quick and dirty. And I feel dirty for suggesting it, but... Um, so, we can say map.min by for each edge in the map, that edge has a moon. Um, all right. Um, so, what am I thinking? Oh, so the other thing is, if there is no path, Um, to this node off the center, then I don't know. I mean, one answer could be prune out all nodes that aren't in that path. I'm sorry, here I'm doing one plus count. I could just add the edges together. That's probably the better way to do it. Um, so instead of having a thing called count, we're going to have a thing called path. Um, if this is equal to the center, our path is going to be, I don't know, just the center node. No, it's going to be an empty set, uh, an empty list, set, whatever. Um, set of, there you go set of edge and this is going to return a set of edge um, oh hang on I want to start at an edge um, So we're going to say start at an edge. Um, and we're going to say if start.moon is equal to the center, we happen to know what the center is. Yeah. Then we return the set of edge, which is just um, start itself. Um, otherwise, and maybe this does need to return a mutable set. Um, so this will need to return a mutable set of that starting edge. 
else return path. Veil new, I'm uh, sorry, veil p being our path is equal to that. Um, we don't need to provide the center here anymore. We do have um, an edge dot moon with which we can do a lookup. Um, And what now? What's my issue? P dot add. Uh, we're going to add start and return P. Ay, ay, ay. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to get this done in time for meetings that I have this morning. So maybe I do wrap it up here and pick it up later. I hate to interrupt this in the middle, but I don't know that I have a way to finish it right now. Um, So what's required? What's required is an edge, and what I'm returning is a string. Um, um, yeah, I'm missing something fairly obvious here. That's uh, kind of frustrating. Um, So taking the map and we want the entry in the map that's for this center. Um, I'm going to use that as the starting point. Um, and again, this is not working for some reason. Um, yeah, just trust me that that exists. Um, all right, and does add here, no, add returns a boolean, we can't do add there. So this is like the ugliest way ever to create the paths. Um, let's start first with Santa's path to the center. Yep, didn't think so. Unresolved reference edge. That's because I called it start here instead of calling it edge, um, which was a bad name, but uh, seems to work. So can we get Sat uh, Santa's? We got 120. I don't even know how we got 120 here because I'm trying to, oh, because I called the wrong function. That's why. Um, so I want... Hmm. Uh, graph of Santa is where I want to start. Um, and we already know that com is the center. Yeah, and I don't need this count function anymore. Um, it was great while it lasted, but I'm breaking data structures left and right. And when I'm ending up with a superior to what I started with anyway. All right, so this failed most gloriously. So path, what was my problem? Kotlin null pointer exception. Yeah, I was afraid that might happen. Um, so if, uh, if the center is calm, then we're done. Um, 
Otherwise, return the map containing the center, add this, return it. All right, so here we got, this is the path Santa's got to take. Um, so that's our path, and then we can count its number of elements and verify that that's the count we ended we had earlier 120 that's correct um, so val santa uh, is going to be this path and we don't want the count we just want this um, uh, we need a type the type of this is a set of edge. Yes, it does happen to be a mutable set, but in this context, we don't care about that. Um, value. And so we want print line of, let's see. Santa dot count plus u dot count minus Santa dot intersect u dot count. I think that's how that resolves. So if we take the path from U to the center and from Santa to the, to the center and then net out all the edges that you have in common, um, I think that is the answer. That's not the correct answer. Your answer is too high. Make sure you're using the full input data. All right. So that was a wild guess. It doesn't actually make any sense because that's greater than the number I'd started with. That's a ton of orbital transfers. I mean, it, it doesn't exceed either of the, it doesn't exceed the sum of the two numbers. So it is potentially valid, but this number is too high. Um, I hate to rely on that sort of hint. I was just really pressed for time right now. Um, so, I think that I'm off by two. So I want to start with a simpler example. So we're going to start with this example here. Um, so we're going to say val map is equal to take this example. Um, no val data is equal to this. Val map, instead of doing the read lines thing, which we ultimately do want to do, here we will suffice with data dot trim dot split at new line dot map. All right, so let's test uh, the example data first and see our number of orbital transfers. I think we're off by two. We got a nine. Uh, four orbital transfers are required. So here I took, I should print out some more data. Um, I should print out each of these components. So here we have Santa.count. Here we've got u.count, and we want uh, santa.intersect u.count. The number of paths that you have in common with Santa uh, as you approach the center. Five, seven, three, nine. All right. So Santa takes uh, one, two, three, four, so I've got it off by one thing here already. Santa's at I. 
or he's orbiting I, you need one, two, three, four to get to the center. Um, he didn't, doesn't need five. Here, I would need um, one, two, three, four, five, six transfers to get to the center, not seven. Uh, so yeah, I am off by two, like I was su suspecting that I was. Um, five, seven, three, the number of paths that we have in common. So we share a common ancestor, D. One, two, three transfers to get to the center. So yeah, I was just off by two, I think. Um, <laughs> so, okay. How do I do this? Well, the hack way, the hack solution would be to get rid of this here. Um, and then my numbers would match up. You'd have all the orbital transfers ex except the one to the center. Um, so that reduces all the numbers. Oh, was I off by one, not two? Because this said nine earlier, and now it says eight. How many transfers? Oh, eight is completely incorrect as well. Um, yeah, no, I'm off by two in the other direction. That's not right either. Yeah, I'm confused. Santa intersect you is an interesting concept. Um, but this is, oh, I'm wanting to subtract the intersection from each of these two collections. That's what I'm messing up. Uh, isect is equal to santa.intersect you. And this is of type set edge. Um, so I'm wanting nodes that are in one collection that are not in the other and vice versa. Um, wait, um, Santa dot difference filter not edge U dot contains edge. This is the sort of thing I'm wanting. Uh, I don't think I need any of the rest of those. And then you want this the other way around. You don't even need the intersection set. Um, two and four. Now I still have some off by whatever error. Um, So this, I think this is just an off by two error, if I were to sum those two numbers together. Um, so Santa would have to transfer one node to D from I, and I would have to transfer three nodes to get there. So if I take these two numbers, and sum them together. Um, that's uh, the total number of orbital transfers required for this example. Um, so that's four. And then let's uh, use the actual input as opposed to the test input here. Comment out the test input. need to sum these two numbers together. 
So yeah, my original estimate was way off. Uh, this is 229. Yes, we are so much closer to rescuing Santa. Now I lost my original uh, count of how many pa uh, nodes there are in the graph. Uh, that code is gone and sacrificed. Um, and probably not for good reasons. So I should try to recover that at some point. Um, that said, I've got like 10 minutes for breakfast until my meeting. So... Uh, thanks for watching. It's been entertaining, and we'll see you next time.